Well, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, we are from a Swiss company called Glocan Technologies, and uh, we were facing a problem that uh, MapQuest turned down their tiles and there were no tiles freely available on the world. So we started to work on a project uh, for, for developing fast base maps. Uh, OSM to Vector Tiles project was a student project uh, done in cooperation with us. And we did the second part uh, for the hosting. So we were digging into how the vector tiles can be hosted. And uh, it's in fact possible to host them even like without server at all. You can just unpack them to Amazon S3 and use them. But uh, uh, this talk will speak or show um, a demo or, or it, will, it will show a server, a open, new open source project, um, um, which uh, presents them dynamically. So, so the, the reason why we started to work on this project is that uh, we wanted to have maps hosted on our server uh, based on primarily from on OpenStreetMap data, but uh, this is applicable to any, uh, any data rendered into vector tiles with, uh, under our own control uh, with custom look and feel and uh, uh, with single style which is available across all different platforms. So making one style which you can use on the web for printing in the native mobile application and even offline. Uh, so, so it's a pleasure for me uh, to, to announce a new open source project called Tile Server GL, uh, which is uh, a map server. Uh, and uh, it has two parts. Uh, it, it was designed directly to serve vector tiles uh, and everything what you need together with vector tiles to, to have a fast viewer. Uh, but it also renders uh, the vector tiles into rasters for the older clients. Uh, and for this, it's using Mapbox GL native rendering engine. So, so even on the server, uh, runs the same uh, implementation of the rasterization. And uh, therefore, the maps look exactly even if they are burned into PNG or JPEG tiles. Okay, so uh, what exactly does the Tile Server GL do? Well, basically it uh, uses the vector tiles uh, to, to serve styled maps. So you can have uh, multiple maps with a different look and feel from the single vector tiles. Uh, now it's time for a short demonstration. So uh, to try the Tile Server GL, the easiest way is to download the vector tiles from OSM2 vector tiles. Uh, you can download the whole planet, which is around 54 gigabytes. Or in this case, we download just, uh, just an extract of, of Bonn, which is 35 megabytes. And uh, then you can go to the Tile Server uh, GL GitHub uh, repository. And uh, just, by, just by copying a single Docker command, you can download the completely prepared Docker image. And, and yeah, there it is. <laughs> Uh, this is an alternative to the npm package that was shown in the previous talk. And just by running the docker command, uh, it will automatically find the mb tiles in the folder. And then in the web browser, you can go to the, to the local host. Uh, there's the list of the available styles. And uh, the default viewer uh, automatically detects if there's a WebGL support, which it is in this case. So it's serving nice vector tiles interesting features. Uh, but uh, there's also the alternative. You can directly open the raster tiles, uh, which look almost identical because it's, it's rasterized on the server using the, the Mapbox GL native, which is designed to provide almost identical tiles as the JavaScript version. And there's also, uh, there are also links to available services such as TileJSON or WMTS. So all of this is possible, obviously, thanks to the open source components it uses, uh, especially the Mapbox GL native, which is used for the rasterization. So a huge thank you to the Mapbox and, and to the open source community, because this wouldn't be possible without them. And it, uh, it allows us to create a 100% open source project, uh, which is fully independent and standalone without any external dependencies. And since the vector task can also be relatively small, it doesn't require any 
arch infrastructure so so you can easily host the server on the regular virtual private server or even on a laptop in completely offline environment uh, the main features of the tile server gl is serving the the vector tiles including all the styles and assets but also rendering the raster tiles as a fallback uh, in the standard XYZ tiles with tilejson and and WMTS, uh, you can even you can even combine the vector tiles with with uh, raster tiles to create hybrid maps with uh, labels and vector features, and it also contains uh, several static maps endpoints. Because uh, in the backend there are all the open source uh, project, uh, a great open source project from uh, from Mapbox. Um, we are also using the GL JSON styles uh, for for designing uh, the maps. Uh, Mapbox uh, has released some some open designs which people can customize for their for their purpose legally. Uh, all the open source components are also released under BSD license. Uh, and uh, the JSON GL styles we have seen before on other talks. Uh, it's an alternative to to traditional SLD or Carto CSS styles for styling vector data. Very cleverly designed and with open specification on GitHub, which you link you find here. Uh, and it's in fact pretty easy to, for manual editing. Uh, there are open source editors uh, available out there, uh, where on the on the right side you just see the JSON, and uh, on the left side a preview of a map, so you can edit the JSON and uh, immediately see the changes. Uh, and uh, of course, the best editor is from uh, from Mapbox, but this is not open source. Uh, to use this editor, you have to upload uh, the data to the Mapbox hosting, which is their business model. Uh, and uh, then you can style the data uh, on the top of their platform. Still, because the JSONs are open, uh, they, are, um, they are usable everywhere afterwards. The, uh, the GL JSON styles, uh, um, for, for styling the GL, you need also additional assets like uh, fonts and icons, which appears on the maps. They are pre-processed for displaying fast on the, on the maps uh, into a format which is designed for fast displaying on, on a WebGL and OpenGL cards. Uh, in fact, this, this part of the stack is also open sourced. Uh, so another big thank you to my box. Uh, you can you can get a build glyphs utility turning true type font true type fonts into into the format which you need, and sprite zero utility open source for turning SVG files the icons into into sprites for direct using in the JSON styles. Uh, the tile server GL includes uh, ready to use assets, so you can start with something and start to work on your own maps, improve uh, improve the look and style, and change it, adjust it for you. Uh, the fonts are a bit of issue, especially if you if you are looking for a worldwide font. Mapbox is licensing Arial font from Microsoft, and we were working on uh, on uh, uh, changing the Noto fonts, which are free fonts from Google, uh, into this format and merging them together. And it's now available on the on the GitHub under this repository. So in fact, you can quite easily create a global map with all the characters, glyphs in Japanese, Chinese, Arabic, uh, Hebrew, and, and other uh, languages. So uh, the vector tiles can, can be easily viewed in several applications, such as Mapbox, Mapbox GLJS or OpenLess 3. And uh, as well, there are, there are native mobile applications. Uh, you can actually download this application now and try it, and you can even download the tiles offline. Uh, but but the, uh, since there's the raster fallback, you can easily use the tiles in many existing software without vector tile support, such as QGIS via the WMTS support. Uh, you can you can easily uh, produce high quality raster images from the static maps endpoint uh, just uh, by specifi specifying a map center and zoom level. Uh, in the URL, or you can even overlay a polygon just by adding some some parameters to the URL, and this is uh, this is actually great for for displaying static images uh, on the web if you need to visualize some some area or something. Um, 
all the all the mentioned endpoints, including the tiles, also support uh, high DPI high DPI rendering. So so you can easily add the suffix to the URL to produce print ready tiles, which you can use for for many different scenarios. So there are a couple of advanced uh, uses um, for the tile server GL, which are not obvious. Um, uh, the, the, the direct use is that you pre-render or pre-generate the, the vector tiles into MB tiles and drop it to the folder, but there is config file documented with a complete manual uh, where you can do much more advanced things. Uh, one of them is, uh, is loading the tiles from an external server, so you can have uh, dynamically generated uh, tiles uh, uh, created by geo server or map server and combine these uh, with other resources like pre-rendered raster tiles hosted on Amazon S3 or the vector tiles. Some of them can be hosted on Amazon S3 or, or other cloud storages. And uh, the tile server GL is able to be just, just a component which is rendering uh, uh, on a server side, uh, the, the print ready outputs, the tiles, or whatever you need as a raster output from the vector tiles. Um, this, this allows, uh, or, or a typical use uh, is in fact a rendering of a hybrid map, for example, like a satellite map from Google, uh, this style of map where you see labels overlaid over aerial photos, um, uh, and uh, this, this into like PNG tiles usable everywhere or, or printing outputs if you have the data and if you work on the style yourself. Um, the, uh, the whole stack is in fact, the whole mapbox stack uh, is designed around Mercator uh, tiles but, but it's reusable for the custom coordinate system. So if you are fine with the grid for cutting the tiles, which comes from the Mercator, you can assign different, different coordinate system for the data when you process it. And uh, then create, create tiles which are in different coordinate system without reprojecting. Uh, this, uh, this including usage on a native mobile applications, for example, or, or over the complete stack. Uh, an example of, uh, of such use is uh, this page where uh, we have created vector tiles from the, uh, from the official open data in Switzerland. And you see the, the original coordinates of the shape files uh, downloaded from, from the Swiss government uh, with a precision up to centimeters for, for the data uh, which are created. So you can use it for cadastral map or, or any other application where you need uh, data without transformation to not loss uh, any precision on the data itself. Uh, there is a, a great way, like uh, it's possible, it's, it's important to think about our server GL as a component which, which fits into a stack of other components. Uh, so you can, you can hide it behind map proxy, for example, and have WMS on top of tile server GL, have WMTS or uh, KML super overlay. So it's other open source block which you have to combine with this uh, to have something which is uh, production ready, in fact. The biggest advantage of tile server GL is that it's fully scalable, especially if, if the vector tiles are distributed together with the software. So um, uh, if you have the MB tiles on the same disk, uh, you can just multiply the virtual machine or set an autoscaler to launch more machines in case the traffic is uh, uh, increased and you handle many more visitors quite easily because there are no uh, external dependencies on uh, like PostGIS or, or there is no central point which would be central point of failure. Each machine is able to render the whole world quite easily, and uh, this gives you power to, to scale. Uh, uh, we are providing Docker uh, images, which runs well as Docker microservices, again, for plugging in the different components uh, for the production deployment. And uh, it's even possible to, I mean, it's quite easy, quite easy to install the software natively with NPM. So if you are not in favor of Docker, you can just, just do, you use your own deployment script uh, we use internally Ansible, but there are other uh, puppets and, and other deployment tools which you can use with this tool quite easily. Um, the tool is designed to run behind uh, a web server, a powerful one, uh, like Nginx, where you can set up different security restrictions based on IP addresses. You can set up HTTPS. You can, you can uh, uh, do any sort of um, like key restriction to the, to the maps which you serve. Uh, so all of this is done somewhere else than in tile server GL. As I said before, it's a component which you have to fit with other open source components together. 
Uh, and uh, another important part is caching. So, so the task server GL doesn't contain any caching. It's the raw rendering tool. And you should set it up together with other, like map proxy or varnish or other tools to, to have high performance map. It's pretty fast on the rendering. Uh, but still, if people are visiting uh, repetitively the same tile, you, sh you should not render it again and again and again uh, if, if uh, the tile is popular. So we would be very glad to, uh, to help you, if you want, uh, with, with the application of this tool. Uh, in your cases, uh, on, your top, on your data, uh, on your deployment. Otherwise, just, just go to the, to the tileserver.org website. We hope other people will start to use this project and the community start to grow. Uh, the, our, our motivation on creating this was really a solving of a problem of in, internal problem of the company of having a base map, which we can use in our products internally. And uh, we decided to make it this way so that other people can benefit from this. And we hope that the community take, take over and uh, improve the tool further and uh, it gets live. So, so the main reason why we are presenting it here and why we made these decisions to, to open source it is, is that we hope that will grow itself and other people use it. Uh, once more, thank you a lot to, to Mapbox for, for everything what, what is open source. It's pretty amazing for us. It was in fact quite easy just to, just to make the glue in between uh, and, and create, create this sort of tool. Uh, and I, I really hope the, the guys uh, uh, will benefit from, from this uh, and that they will benefit only if the tools are in use and the programmers are contributing back to what Mapbox is using internally. So there are, there are back uh, benefits for in, in form of uh, uh, pull request and contribution to the code so that they don't have to pay everybody who works on the tool because, because uh, new functionality is being added. So uh, it was a pleasure for me to, to, to talk about this and present the project. I hope you will like it and follow us on Twitter. Thanks. Thank you very much for your, your oh, sorry about that, about your, uh, for your presentation. So are there any questions? OK, I see the right one there and here and yeah, probably somewhere else. So I think he was slightly faster. So. <laughs> Hi. Um, how does it work on servers without a graphic card? In fact, we were. We want. To. Yeah, I can do it. Yeah. Uh, we are actually using a virtual frame buffer in the inside the Docker. And how is the And how is the performance? Did you do any benchmarks? Uh, not yet, but we are planning to to actually actually test this uh, on a in, a in a cloud cloud service when where there are graphic cards available. So. So. In fact, uh, we have some we have some applications uh, on the test, on the like pre-production phase, uh, and they, it runs pretty well. So just try the Docker, and uh, it, in fact, because there is the, the rendering is quite hard uh, on uh, transferring the data into graphic card and then back. Uh, so you need to have very powerful graphic card that you benefit on the server that you benefit from the graphic card itself. Otherwise, it just falls back to the software rendering, and the transfer of the data are not there anymore. So, so it's pretty decently uh, performant if you deploy just on a software without software rendering, without any graphic card at all on a server. Uh, and the Docker is doing this. So, so just by running the Docker, it will run everywhere without uh, caring about drivers. Uh, the test you said um, uh, that that's, is supposed to be done on the Amazon GPU machines. Uh, so, it's, so it's easier to, to deploy on a, on a hardware which has fixed configuration and tune the performance. So that's something what is on our roadmap. Thanks. OK, <laughs> so it's resolved. So uh, I didn't see in the meantime any raising hands, but that might have changed. Yeah. Is it possible to, for the client to send in uh, uh, a styling for the rendering, so on request time, so that you can apply a different uh, rendering uh, in a different styling? Well, if you are using client-side rendering, uh, then, uh, then uh, you have the style in the client yeah. anywhere. Uh, on the server-side rendering, in this moment, we have the, the JSONs static on the server. And for the purpose of caching of the raster rendering, and uh, it's quite highly optimized for serving tiles, which doesn't change that much. Uh, but that's, that's one of the features which we would be very glad to accept pull requests if, if you have the use case. 
uh, go for it and, and we gladly review the code and, and include this functionality in. So it's not in there yet. Thank you. Okay, are there any questions in the meantime? We're doing, again, pretty well on time. Um, but if there are no more questions, then I suggest that we start our final coffee break before the final keynote. That's a lot of finals. Sorry about that. Um, and well, thank you all. Thank you for your presentations, actually all of them. Thank you for attending. <laughs>